What is a data transfer object? Well, a data transfer object, or DTO, is an object that carries data between processes or applications. It encapsulates data in a simple and standardized format that can be easily transmitted across different layers of an application or across different applications. And in the context of a REST API, a DTO can be considered a contract between the client and the server since it represents a shared agreement between the client and server about how data will be transferred and used. But why exactly do you want to use DTOs in your REST API? To understand this, let's look at a simple request to a REST API, where the client is requesting the data for one of the games. The API receives the request and then asks for the game data from the repository. The repository finds and returns the data in the form of an entity, and the REST API simply forwards that exact entity back to the client in the form of a JSON object. It doesn't seem like there is any problem with this, but consider what could happen if suddenly requirements change and we are asked to rename the price property to retail price. And not only that, we will also start storing a secret code next to each game, which is for internal use only, so it should never leave the backend. However, since we are returning the entities as is, we are now sending both retail price and secret code in our response to the client, which will not just break the client, since it was expecting price and not retail price, but opens the door for the client to read and show a secret that was not meant for it. Because of this, the REST API should never return the entities that came from the repository to clients, but instead it should translate entities into DTOs that conform to the agreement between client and server, which in this case means we always return ID, name, and price to clients, and nothing else. So, the DTO acts as a contract that defines expectations and requirements for how data will be exchanged between client and server, and you should make sure you always honor this contract on all communications with your clients. Let's now see how to start using DTOs in a REST API. Now, for this, we will be using the record types feature of C Sharp because they allow you to create immutable classes primarily designed to hold data. And this matches our DTO requirements since the data that comes from them should be immutable, meaning that once the DTO is created, its values should not be changed. So what we're going to do now is go ahead into our game start at the API directory, the root, and let's just right click and click and create a new, not C sharp file, but instead just a standard new file. And this is going to be named DTOs.cs. Right, so in this one file, we're going to be declaring all of the DTOs that are needed uh, by our REST API. Now, one thing that we have to remember here is to also add the corresponding namespace. So let's go ahead and add namespace gamestore.api and let's add here DTOs, all right? So that all of our DTOs are in that namespace. Now to declare these DTOs, let's go ahead and also open our entities class over here because the, DTO, the DTOs are going to reuse most of the properties of the game entity. So let's go ahead and use that and let me go ahead and collapse this and let's see if I can put the game on the right side. So I'll do split right so we can see better. And now we can see the entity on the right side and the DTOs on the left side. So I'll scroll a little bit to the right. Okay, so the first DTO that we're going to declare is the one that's going to be used for retrieving data from the API, right, for the get endpoints. So we will declare public record game DTO. And I'm going to open and close and just send this to the next line so that we can see better all of the parameters. Now for a record type, all you have to do to declare the properties is just declare them in line inside of these uh, parentheses, right? So in this case, let's go ahead and start with our ID. So let's declare int ID. Then we go with the name. Okay, then we go with the genre. And let's keep, keep scrolling down. Then we have our decimal price and date time release date and finally we have our string image uri okay so that is our game dto and notice how it is much easier to declare than it is to declare an entire class so that we will use to retrieve data and then we have to declare a couple of more dtos for uh, creation and update of uh, our resources so let's scroll down a little bit and let's go ahead and declare our next record type. So it's going to be public record create game DTO. Okay, so same idea. 
And to create again, we don't need an ID as we know uh, so far. So we will start with uh, our name. So string name. And in fact, I'm going to actually copy most of the properties from game DTO here to save time. So very similar properties. But here we have to remember that we also want to account for the validation of all of those properties, right? So we want to bring in all of the data, these data annotations that we were using in the entity. We want to transfer them now into the DTO. So our create game DTO for the name, we want to say that yes, so it is required. Right. And also, and also let's do control dot here so that we can use and import system that component model that data annotations. And then this is also string length. And we said it is going to be 50 for the name. Next one, generate same idea, but the string length is going to be 20. Right. And so scroll down and then we have for our price. We know that we want to use the range data annotations. So let's put that over here for the price. And then we have release date. We don't have anything specific. And for the image URI, we want to specify that it has to be a URL. And it also has to have the string length for a hundred. So I'm just going to copy that over here. Next, we're going to be defining the, the DTO, the last DTO, and it's going to be for updating resources, right? And as you're going to see, this is pretty much going to be the same thing as a great game DTO, but you always want to keep it separate because eventually it is, it is fairly likely that the contract for creation and update uh, is going to change, right? So right now our requirements are very simple, so we're not going to notice any difference, but uh, eventually things could change. So that's what I'm going to keep them separate. So instead of create game DTO, this is going to be update game DTO. So what we want to do now is to define also uh, an extension method so that we can easily map from a game entity into a DTO. And we're going to see how that's going to be very useful when we start using the DTOs in the endpoints. And so to do that, let's go back to Explorer. And under the Entities directory, let's just right click and let's create a brand new C Sharp class, which we're going to name Entity Extensions. Okay, entity extensions. Let me close this for a moment. And on this one, uh, well, let's just fix namespace first, convert to false code namespace, and also remove unnecessary usings. Okay, remember that, that all extension methods will live uh, will be static, so they should live in a static class. So let's do this static, and then the method that we're going to define here is public static game DTO, and then we have to do a control dot to use game store dot API dot DTOs. And then as DTO, and then since it is an extension method, we have to define what exactly is that we are going to be extending. So we're going to say this game. So we're going to be extending the game entity, right? With a brand new method that's named as DTO. And then the name of the parameter is just going to be game. Okay, so with this in place, we want to go ahead and do the proper mapping. So let me just actually transfer DTOs on the right side so we can see better. Okay, so really what we want to do here is just create a brand new instance of the DTO based on the values of the game. So we're going to say return new game DTO, right? And then for the parameters, the first one uh, is going to be the ID. So we get the ID from game.id. And then we go for game.name. And then uh, game.genre, game.price, game.release date, and game image URI. So now we have a very handy extension method that we can use anytime we need to convert a, a game entity into a DTO. And so a quick note on this, I know that we could be using also here AutoMapper or many other of these uh, mapping frameworks that are available today. Uh, and that's totally fine. So feel free to use that if that works best for you. Uh, but in this case, things are super simple right now. And in general case, I have found that uh, you don't really need to introduce another framework for something as simple as doing a conversion as we're doing here. So an extension method is very straightforward, is very easy to reason about, very easy to create. And so uh, this is the preferred approach that I have these days, as opposed to using uh, any other mapping framework. But it's just a personal preference, of course. So now let's see how we can use the DTOs in our uh, endpoints. So let's go ahead and open up our Explorer and let's go into endpoints, games endpoints over here. All right, and perhaps I'm going to just move everything into our main tab now. Okay, and we're going to be focusing on games endpoints. So what we're going to do now is uh, let's start using them, right? So for the first endpoint, the one that gets all the all the uh, 
games. Let's do this. So let's send uh, this repository to get all to the next line. And what we're going to do is that after we get all of the games, the, the entities, we're going to be using link uh, with the select operator here so that we transform each game into game dot as DTO. Okay, that means that for each of the games that come from get all, uh, we're going to transform the entity into the corresponding uh, DTO object. Right, so that way we're not returning entities anymore back to the client, but only DTOs. Same idea for map get by ID. Instead of returning the game over here, we're going to say game dot as DTO. Now let's keep, keep going down into our post method here. And the thing here is that now we have to look into the parameters we're receiving. So now we don't want to receive the game entity anymore. We want to receive the corresponding DTO. So let's rename this into create game DTO. And let's just name it game DTO, right? And for this, we have to do control dot so we can start using game store that API that DTOs, right? So let's start using that. And now we have to figure out how to actually create the entity because now we don't have the entity. We cannot just send it over directly to the repository. We have to create it on the fly. So let's open up uh, one more line here and we're going to do the same thing, the, the, the following thing. So game, game equals new. And here we can go ahead and define all of the properties for our entity. So we'll say that name equals game DTO dot name and then genre game DTO dot genre. And we'll just keep going with this, of course, until we complete all of the properties. So game DTO dot price, release date, release date, and finally image URI equals DTO image URI. And with that in place, the rest should be the same. So now we have we are creating the entity directly inside the endpoint and we send that a new entity inside our repository and we return the generated ID. So let's see what we need to do now for the put endpoint over here. So just like with the other endpoint, we are not receiving the game directly here. We have to receive the update game DTO. Okay, and perhaps we rename uh, we rename updated game into updated game DTO. Let me do F2 here. So updated game DTO. Okay, and here let's see. So we are uh, retrieving the existing game from the repository as an entity. And then all we have to do is really just the same logic. So existing game, name, gender, price, release date, and you're right. We just take the values from the DTO as expected. And then we just send back that existing game into the update API of repository so that it can get updated. And then for our last endpoint, uh, in terms of it, we don't have to do anything special here because there's no DTO involved, right? So there's not, nothing uh, other than the ID to be received here and there's nothing to be returned. So we are pretty much done there. And so with this in place, we can go ahead and test this out and see if it keeps working. So again, the, the behavior should be exactly the same at this point because we, we have no difference between the entities and the DTOs so far, but this could change in the future, of course. So I'll do control J and then I'm going to go into my terminal over here. I'll do that net run and then I'll go into Postman and I'll try out my get all endpoint here. I'll click on send. And as expected, we are getting the values just like before, same idea. But of course, now the properties are all coming from the DTO, the uh, game DTO. And if we try out our post endpoints, so over here, uh, where we have our body, of course, for the Minecraft game, we'll click on send and we can verify that, yeah, it was created successfully. Uh, we can see that it now shows up in our get list of games right there. And we could even verify that the validations are working properly. So let me just clean up uh, the name of Minecraft over there. See what happens if I try to do a send. And as expected, we are getting a bad request because the name field is required. So yeah, everything is working as expected now using our DTOs.